and I'm going to do my oh. stuff. I do, <laughs> I do my setups uh, all the time and I wait for my Facebook to load. That's my introduction line to all my interviews because I have still not figured out how to mute it and I end up, yeah, it's going to just go on. <laughs> yeah. And there we are. So we start our interview. Good morning, everybody. Um, and good evening, Kate. Uh, you're sitting there evening. We're 11 and a half hours apart. Unbelievable that we are, I'm sitting in India, meeting amazing people across during COVID times, online screen, and still we're feeling the chills. We're feeling the goosebumps. We're feeling connected. <laughs> we're feeling elevated, uplifted. I have no idea idea what's happening but whatever is happening is happening amazing welcome kate uh i know kate through samantha we interviewed her um when she was the 37th number which is i just thought i interviewed her two mothers back but it's already three five six mothers before you know it's happened very quickly but kate welcome and thank you uh, please, please Go ahead and introduce yourself because my favorite line is the mother who lives the story tells the story the best. So let's go ahead and hear your story of where you've been, where you come from and how you've reached. You're a photographer, you're a fellow photographer. I totally love that. We're going to have a great conversation because we both love visuals and we lo both love uplifting people through our photography. So introduce yourself and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Uh, my name is Kate Mahates. My name rhymes and I have a lot of friends that think that's funny. I have an eight and a half year old son. I raise him, I'm a single mom. So I raise him, just him and me living in a small apartment above a garage on a farm. Yeah. And I am a photographer and marketing helper. I help local businesses and entrepreneurs um, reach more people through photography. Lovely. And we have Debbie, who's a pillar. And I am actually passing you on beautifully to that pillow because she's a beautiful soul. I totally love her and she's a photographer as well. So I saw, thought that let me hand over Kate to her because there are five pillars mm. who are absolutely my strength at this point in time, getting all the mothers in and Debbie's here. It's morning for her as well, but she's there typing for us and um, I think no, it's evening for her. It's late evening for her. Um, Debbie, thank you for being here. And I'm thrilled to be pillar for Kate and uh, Kate and Debbie are going to meet. She's a photographer and totally an empath and totally full of love. And that's what I feel about you. That's why you both need to meet. <laughs> Kate, go ahead and tell me your journey as a photographer, what it has been, what kind of pictures have you been taking? And then we'll move on to you as a journey of your mo uh, a mother journey. We'll take it from there. Okay. Um, photography was... Uh something that I didn't realize was I was good at it or talented with it when I was younger. I went to South Africa when I was 19. Uh, I went there by myself. My friend lived there. So then I joined up with her and she took me all over South Africa. Well, the Western Cape province and into Eastern Cape province. And back then I had a, an automatic film camera and 13 rolls of film, I came home, got it all developed. And as I was going through my photos and making my scrapbook, my mom goes, oh, I think we finally found your talent. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I am 20 years old and we know what I'm good at now. <laughs> so I uh, started taking a few photography courses in Vancouver yeah. and uh, didn't really think a whole heck of a lot about it. I just thought, I'm just gonna do this for fun. And uh, I started to think more about pursuing it. So I started to look for schools and I couldn't find any schools locally. I was looking at some in California and I thought oh, that's going to be tricky for me to get down there and go to school. And then uh, some friends of mine said, well, what about entering contests? Um, you must know about contests and stuff like from photography magazines. I'd never looked at a photography magazine before. Wow. So I went to the drugstore and I picked up two photography magazines and one of them highlighted a school on Vancouver Island, which is not very far away. Okay. So I enrolled in the photography school on Vancouver Island. It was called Western Academy of Photography in mm -hmm. 2004 and uh, took a 10 month intensive diploma program. It was you slept, breathed and ate photography like 24 seven for 10 months and uh, learn a ton doing that. 
And then just to fast forward, um, it was, uh, it took uh, about five or six years after that, before I really started to feel comfortable as a photographer and able to say, yes, I am a photographer. Oh and uh, yeah, that was, that was quite a while ago. It's now been 16, 16 years. You know, since, you are, I, 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 cool. I, and Debbie's here and she will resonate. We are from the film, like I also studied on film camera. So we are yeah. from the time of film camera. So I've been in photography for now, I'm turning 40 in two months. So 18 years old, almost 22 years of photography. So wow. I, I told you, and I let, let me, the audience know that Kate is one of the uh, people I've not spoken too much about her story and everything. And I told her we'll uh, do it step by step, mm -hmm. but I absolutely was very sure there's a lot of connection between me and Kate when I started speaking to her on the phone. And um, here it is, I became a photographer very young. I uh, also was uh, part of this competition uh, and I was, it also fell into my lap and like, I think I was not good at studies at all. And then suddenly, suddenly my father's like, oh, we found your talent. Like, just like you said that I, like, I was just like dropped into photography and then uh, a course from Australia came in uh, and it was a two years, uh, two and a half years degree course. And in India, nobody had studied photography. And then I took yeah. that course while I was doing my graduation. And the way you said 10 hours a day, I was breathing, living everything. And then I became India's mm -hmm. first baby and child photographer. So I like we uh, like I like the fact that you and me have started at the same uh, age of, you know, 18, 20. And we were just like very young as photographers. Yeah. And, you know, usually uh, we hear that people uh, get into photography after realizing something and then they step into photography and etc. But when I hear some I think I'm not, never hear somebody who said I was just like thrown after me. This is the first person I'm hearing. There might be many, mm. but I think I love that fact and I absolutely connect you. Level one connection done, Kate. This is <laughs> one Let's go in and have more connection getting in. Um, uh, and Debbie is just loving us. Like Debbie is, I told her Debbie that I'm passing on Kate to you and Debbie's here all supporting her. This is love her supporting. She's just reading comments. Oh, so let's, thank you, let's, Debbie. <laughs> uh, let's move on. So you, um, I remember when I was trying to launch uh, se uh, a self portrait course or something or coaching or uplifting women. At that time, I was not into this, creating this book. Of course, it was in the making somewhere in my subconscious or something. And I remember you, I think one of your comments that I also do something like that or Samantha mm -hmm. said do something like that uh, of uplifting women. And I was very amazed that somebody sitting here is planning something about uplifting women. And then there's somebody uh, across somewhere else also doing the same planning at the same time. So now connection number two, come down yeah. to forward and Kate, um, at the same time, we're trying to create something. And I think through marketing, you were trying to help as well, uh, women and mothers. And I don't know whether it was mothers. So let's talk about that. What was that? Oh, I just think that there's something in the air. I think there's a lot of people out trying to, in their own ways, to uplift people. You know, it's so, um, it's so necessary to focus on the positive and not on the negative. And I really, really think it's, yeah, I think it's super important, especially when I'm photographing people. I want to know what it is that they don't like about having photos of themselves. And then let's lean into that. Let's work it through and see, because when we're done our session, I want there to be photos there that you, you love. Yeah. You know, it, I, um, I want that. I've, I know I'm not responsible for that. Like people have their own things that they have to work through. But even if this is just part of their journey and a step into yeah. um, learning how to appreciate themselves in yeah. whatever way they need, right. if I can help out a little bit, that's, I think that's, I've done, I've done what I wanted to. I know you're, you're being very humble and nice right now, but that's a very big step. <laughs> Kate, you know, and um, I've worked uh, like this with mothers, like I, I became a baby photographer and I started working with mothers and when initially uh, I started working with them uh, and of course the protocol is go talk to them, do Reiki of their house, speak to them what they want, put that form ahead and I did it two, three times and I don't know how I was blessed at the very young age to say, 
this is a chatter and I'm telling you this project is coming after 20 years but this was a chatter and what I decided was I will never talk to a mother before a shoot because when she's pointed that don't shoot this in the shoot I would be just looking at that and said don't shoot that don't shoot that and somehow that would like come into my picture because the focus straight away went from the conversation into don't shoot this angle right. don't do this and I'm like Shika keep in mind she said not to shoot it not to shoot it and I'm like stop the chatter don't talk to any mother just approach because I was a I was always a very positive person and I dropped that so early that I just said pick up and they're like would you like to talk to us and no I will come there and mm. I tried to master my natural life so much because I realized that uh, equipment was scaring them as well and just putting a lot of equipment was um, taking away a lot of uh, you know bonding up so I decided to mm-hmm. practice so much my natural light that no matter what natural light I found I will create magic okay and then mm. something started happening Kate you know it I stopped talking so I said she's like would you like to know I said no I just want you to be ready with one black outfit plain and everything would be spontaneous and then things started emerging you know because I started viewing the way not she viewed herself the mother was viewing herself I started viewing her the way I viewed herself and I saw her light and I saw her you know uh, totally shining and I saw oh my god she's so gorgeous oh my god she looks stunning in this right and yeah. then by the time the shoot ended they were beaming all of us were laughing and for me shoot is like meditation all of them were laughing and beaming and then you know like people ask me how did you get that in me in the pictures and I was like yeah I don't know and today I know because it's that chatter that I stopped even then in my shoots and said I don't want to listen to it because it will focus and what you just said about positivity that yeah you know that whole uplifting them so that's why I said you've been very humble to say but that picture that you would have given to your people and uplifted them would have been that one picture that will root her for the rest of her life to say I'm gorgeous I'm beautiful I hope so it it, it will it will it's not yeah. a small thing and see this movement rising see this movement coming with these interviews it's a very strong pulse mm-hmm. that a mother wants to feel that she's gorgeous. And if a photographer like you comes in and says, you know, you're totally, it's not a small yeah. thing, it's a big thing for her because she's dying to see that self in her. She's dying to hear that. She's dying to feel that, you know, the changes, it's, it's a mess, but I'm gorgeous. So uh, like that's the gift I would like to give you that you're not making a small impact you're making a big impact and I related to your connection number two when you said when I came to know that somewhere across you're doing the same thing with the mm-hmm. same view that I want to make a little change through my work you know I want her to shift her shift her or him or whoever is in front of the camera their whole view um, so what's like the most interesting because this is a project about mothers what's the most interesting mom uh, shoot you've ever had like you would have remembered like you would have said that I definitely <laughs> brought some change in her and because you're you're a person for change I can see it you are meant to bring change what is it like any mother anybody you thought that I know that I'm it might be my sister actually yeah yeah my sister um, my younger sister Chrissy she when she became a mom and I went and took photos of her and, and the baby. But you know, I don't think that was me. That was that she was, ha- she was a new mom. You know, I think that was the magic that she was a new mom. So she's I don't, too sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now, I mean, now she lets me take her photo and she glows. So what was that thing that you, you thought about your um, sister? Uh, and I, I know that you're you're being protective of the sister, but let's view her as a mother. <laughs> let's view her as a mother because we are here to inspire through these interviews to many mothers who might just get inspired by any story that comes out of upliftment. So what was it that you felt that uh, was a struggle? And it is not a judgment, it's a struggle that a mother struggles. And what was the struggle at that time with the photos? What is the struggle that a mother goes through? Uh, well, I don't take very many, well, I don't take very many photos of of um, like family photos anymore. And uh, so this is, this is a tough one for me because it was such a long time ago. I don't remember 
So don't remember taking photos of. Let's move out to what's the recent work of yours. What's your recent work? Where is your recent work taking you? Because that was also an upliftment. I remember. Yeah. So my recent work is um, I've been photographing a lot of women who are stepping out, uh, starting new careers. For example, there's a, a real estate agent I photographed recently, and her children are are grown up, have gone, are going to university, finishing high school, and she's decided to start a new career as a realtor and she came to me for photos and she was someone who told me you know she didn't like a lot of photos of herself and um and I always I really like to know I like to know why right because then it's like I I don't know it's almost like I call them on it and say no 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 I'm sorry I don't see that right and and so when I go and I take their photos and and they then enjoy seeing their photos and it's not how they were thought it was going to turn out at all and that's um that's always very amazing and then watching them use their photos and be excited about their new the new sales that they've made like if they've if they've helped somebody get into a house or helped somebody else move on uh to to a new place um this real estate agent I'm talking about I'm super excited to see her doing that yeah, and I, I like the fact that uh, you're on the same page that people think that pictures don't matter and picture does cannot do that. But that one confident picture of yours going even in your work portfolio, even in your, you know, brings so many people and attracts so many people to you that it's unbelievable, even in marketing or business, how much it helps, you know. Yeah. That, that it brings in and uh, I like like what you said because I also believe that it's just very underestimated the role of a picture especially a portrait that is powerful you know or confident or it makes the person feel that wow they're amazing the minute they see that picture Mm -hmm. I think they also go further and move forward because they've just crossed the the level of that confidence that they had lost and that picture keeps reminding them that no, it's not lost. And I mean, if Kate can see it, I'm sure I'm there. It's all subconsciously happening that, you know, I'm confident, I'm beautiful, I'm amazing. Do you feel that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think also having friends look at your photos, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a huge, huge thing. Because your friend is going to be your biggest advocate. They also end up being my biggest advocate yeah. because they're looking at the photo of you going, oh boy, look at you, like, look at you glowing in this photo, or, you know, that smile right there, that little cheeky glint in your eye, that's you, and that's what I, you know, like, other people are going to see. Yeah, I like yeah. that, I like what mm-hmm. you're saying, because, and I'm loving this conversation also, because, you know, sometimes when I'm in interviews, and um, mothers are not from the photography world, and I'm like, some, somewhere I feel that, can I keep talking about photos, 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 is this so, like, like, I'm so I, I, I try to withdraw myself and not talk about pictures and importance of pictures and importance of visual and how it uplifts. And I totally, I found somebody I can talk to openly about it. <laughs> yeah. like, even if you're 11 and a half hour time zone apart, um, the whole movement is based on this. And I found you finally a mother who is part of this movement as well, who feels the same because this movement is based on the fact that it's just not a picture. There's so much, yeah. so much, the, the two people who are creating it, the one who's looking at you and mm-hmm. the one who's melting down and being vulnerable and opening up. It's like this synergy between both of them that creates that one beautiful picture that the world embraces and then comes running to you saying that we want to be with her, we want to work with her, we want to be around her because she's amazing, you know, or he's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this like, this, I if you can like I for the first time I'm talking about it it might sound a lot of woo -woo, it might sound like so total crazy it's just a picture people say that it's just a picture but Mm -hmm. this this dance that happens this this exchange that's happening one is trying to uplift uh and and you know at very young age I decided I would not produce like my my professor asked me I had I was surrounded by my friends who were doing very like artisty dark images bringing out the dark part through pictures the sadness the dark light the the nude pictures which showed going in and uh, bending down and stuff like that and I was I was the youngest in that batch and I was just like 
I don't want to produce more pain through my work. I decided it very young. I was like, I don't want something tangible because we are negatives, right? I didn't want more mm-hmm. prints of art. Not nothing against it, but I didn't want it. I couldn't resonate with it. I just and in India there were no baby photographers or mother photographers or any kind of family photographers, and there were art art photographers for sure. And then everybody yeah. was moving there, and everybody was moving towards fashion. And I I kept on looking for something, and then I finally found uh, me wanting to be a family photographer because somewhere even at eighteen I wanted to bring um, the fact that. if it's printed it should only bring joy right and yes mm-hmm. that joy will come after solving a lot of stuff behind uh, you know that that smile will not come out even if for those 3 hours i'm shooting it will only come out that if i can resolve it for those 3 hours for them if i make them believe that everything is perfect so it was happening very subconsciously for over a period of 10 12 years i realized this is what i was doing but at the age of 18 i realized you know and then i see you talking the same and i'm just like totally thrilled and excited you can oh. see i'm totally excited that um there is another person who wants to uplift we want to produce work mm. that is uplifting right yes and um and what is it that photography means to you uh, kate what does it bring because this why i'm insisting on photographs right now because this movement is about self portrait when i say the word self portrait mm-hmm. what did what does it mean to you I think that uh it's funny because I'm just going to go back a couple of days or was it yesterday no it was 2 days ago. Um I was talking to a friend of mine who had gone to photography school with me and we became very good friends. And he was he said some very nice things. He goes, "Kate, you've always wanted to do portraiture." So when I fin- when I went to photography school, I was very adamant that I wanted to do a full on black and white portrait portfolio. And my instructors all said that's going to be very difficult. The judges are going to judge you very harshly on that. Are you sure you don't want to do another kind of portfolio? And I said, I'm sure. This is what I want to do. I want to do portraits. And so after I finished school, I went into shooting weddings and families and I dabbled in newborn photography. And here I am going back to doing. I found a way to do portraits of people. And there's something about there's something about being able to capture a person's personality in that split moment that and and I just I don't know I can't I don't know if I can actually articulate what it is but to me there's a magic when I take certain pictures and when I'm culling and going through them and when there's a photo of them and even though I only maybe knew them for that hour that I was photographing them I go yeah I see you I see you so and then, yeah. yeah and there's yeah there's a there's a power and a magic in that when i'm looking at my computer screen and and see more of them than they probably want me to see like i feel like i almost can get into their soul sometimes oh does that God. make sense to you get that yeah, absolutely because i i am totally a gut uh, following person kit and yeah you're one of the moms i said i don't want to know like i'm genuinely telling you other moms either i know their stories or something about them I said I don't know because I knew that like this is going to go absolutely and what you just said that you know sometimes I can see it I can just see it and you know mm-hmm. uh, it's very crazy that um, and what you just said is exactly what I feel like and it's unbelievable to different souls different part of the world feel the same and there are times uh that there are some photographers who can take some people's pictures beautifully and i sometimes like i usually don't struggle because mm-hmm. most of my pictures are amazing but this one photogenic person who thinks she is photogenic or he's photogenic and sometimes i struggle to take even a great i don't know if mm-hmm. you understand i take because yes. i see so much that i am unable to see that i see so much pain behind that photogenic face sometimes that i am struggling i'm struggling and i'm like Come on, Shika. You know she is looking. This person, when they walk to you, they're gorgeous. But when I look through the camera, and I'm like, there's so much pain. I can see yeah. the pain. I can feel the pain, and I'm like, 
I'm unable to shoot and uplift this person because this person is in a lot of pain. But on an outwardly, that person looks absolutely okay to the whole world and to me. But when I look through the camera and I'm like, mm -hmm. I can see you, I can see you, and I can see you. And it's the irony is, it's all the people who've given me the negative chatter about uh, their image. Somehow I see some great stuff in them, it comes out. But this one person who says, no matter what happens, I would be like coming amazing. Is that one person I struggle internally, mentally, it's like a struggle to how to bring that out. And you said, yeah, you can see the soul. I can. And it's for the first time I'm saying it, I always can. <laughs> and uh, like, and it's very difficult to explain that I can, I can see. Yeah, it. I know. And I sometimes wonder, you know, it's, uh, I sometimes wonder if other people think that or wonder that if they ever even think like this person's going to be looking at my face on their computer screen later like I wonder if they ever wonder about that and uh, who knows maybe I just put that idea in their head right now but yeah. um they don't yeah. wonder that we want like like I can actually say, see you sitting on the computer because I sit on the computer and I I'm telling you the world around me dissolves and then you're talking about that one picture coming out we have Petrina here she gets that. She's a photographer as well. Oh, nice. That's joining us. Um, and she definitely gets it because she's afraid. But um, but that computer in you when you're sitting and earlier days negative in you when you were sitting, even in a contact sheet, like yeah. in the contact sheet, you could spot it. You could just say, that's the picture, which is the picture that I want. If it was the best picture of them, even in those small contact sheet lines, in those 36 things, you could see that I've got my picture. Like that's the picture portrait mm -hmm. I will increase it you didn't even have to look through that loop you know to see that yeah picture, the only <laughs> yeah you know you i know the loop it's been so long <laughs> it's so long i know but that loop used to look through and used to just see if it's focused or not and i wished that the picture i'm seeing has just mm. been focused and because that's the picture that i want and that's the picture that's come even in that small size you know and yeah. i totally know what you're seeing and what happens to you when you see that in that person that that person cannot see like what happens to you it's a, it depends if uh if it's something that i see that i can see then there's like a when you were talking earlier about like a like there's like a pain there right depending on the picture and what's happening and what the picture is supposed to be for i might still include it in their um in their proof gallery because it is a powerful picture, it might mean something to them. It might be, um, you never know what was going on with them. And maybe they'll want to remind, like maybe it'll mean something to them that they actually want to keep for some reason. So I'll, I'll, I'll include it. If, if it strikes me in my heart, I will include it for them without judgment. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you fear that the picture that you've put there, they will come back with that particular picture to you and say, you know, everything is okay, but this one, because the lack of acceptance, sometimes what's happening to us is so strong. And especially when mother yeah. is so strong that we will say, you know, all these were good with this one. And then you're sitting quietly there. I'm like, I knew you would be having some comment because they can't resolve mm -hmm. it. They can't figure it out. What's bothering them about it. And I don't know what's happened to you. It's come to me and I've also sat down and said, I'm putting that picture. And then I'm like, this one, um, you know, I don't know why you put that picture there, but like, I don't want to print this, but everything else is okay. And I'm like, yeah, ah. you know? Okay. Yeah. I usually find that people um, actually, they end up picking the, that picture. Yeah. So maybe um, you're talking about two different picture when I'm talking about a picture, which people, uh, maybe you are talking about a picture that they can relate to, or they don't know what they can accept. And sometimes I include a picture, which, I see, which they don't want to see, and I just give it to them. So right. Well, and yeah, I think also the context is a little different because if you're yeah. doing family and newborn photos, that context is different. Where if I'm doing um, portraiture. photos, portraiture, and a lot of people when they're doing their social media, depending on their profession, they might want to use a photo of them themselves that ex has a different expression it can be yeah. very appropriate depending on okay. the context that they decide to use it for absolutely absolutely so yeah. let's do self portrait this book is called 100 self portrait 100 dreams and let's move how like what happens when the camera moves to you kid what's the when it, it moves towards you like 
for me, when I started moving towards me, I created this movement because I was just like, my God, really, Shrika, like so much chatter on wanting to take a picture. This is not okay. My hair is not okay. My dark circles are there. My, I've lost my molars. I don't look okay. You know, after I had my kids, I lost four molars and you know, I'm Debbie's here. And Debbie, I must say this, uh, Debbie, that that story, I keep forgetting her name in can the Cantadora, she was there. Um, and she was talking about her jaw uh, being like getting a tumor because she was always told she's very sensitive and she kept a lot of stuff in her in her system and ended up having a tumor in her jaw and got that removed. And later she realized um, that, um, you know, she was quiet for very long and she used to clinch her jaw. And oh. I think during my first pregnancy, uh, I was very quiet and doctors kept on wondering why I'm losing my molars because mm. uh, there were no cavities there and they were like, maybe it's genetic, but when she keeps coming and the event that we, Lucy, yeah, Lucy is there. And when she keeps coming and I want to get her as one of the mothers, because I totally relate to her because I was just like, I feel that I've lost these two, three molars, four molars in the first pregnancy because of this reason, because I was very quiet and I might be clinching and doing a lot of stuff that I didn't want to speak up about. And uh, hmm. I don't know why I got that. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I went there. Uh, Samantha. Oh, sorry. Uh, Kate, yeah. how did I go there? <laughs> how did I come here to this? Uh, Joe, what were we talking about? I'm well, we first you had mentioned something about what, what's it like when the camera. Yeah, so I was talking about camera coming to yeah. you. So yeah. that's how I was like, all this chatter was coming on to me that, oh no, maybe I lost, I, I look horrible because I don't have three, four molars here and stuff like that. I have dark circles, I have bad hair. And this chatter came to me and I'm like, come on, you've been working with women and you can't do this. And then yeah. I worked on it and I worked on it and I put horrible pictures and I put pictures I hated coming back to the same thing because whatever mm -hmm. I was seeing is what I was shooting for myself. And then I started moving out of it and then I started posting pictures where I started loving my hair. I started loving my skin. Everything started coming back. And I created this movement to even surround myself even more with mothers so that mm. it comes back. So I'm saying that's my journey of self-portrait. What's your journey when the camera faces you? Because we are behind the camera. <laughs> and that's the resistance, uh, you know. We are, we are yeah. You should be behind the cameras. What happens to you? Sorry, I went to the jaw thing. No. <laughs> We can go back to the jaw thing after. No, no, no. I just want. I know it's easier for me to talk about the jaw thing than you talking about your self portrait. What happens when the camera faces you, Kate? Oh, I pose. <laughs> you pose? I totally pose. I, I, I don't, it doesn't bother me. Um, although sometimes, like, if there's a certain picture that I that has been taken of me when I'm caught off guard and if uh, my face is doing something that I don't like, I'm like, ooh, delete that one. But for the most part, I don't mind pictures of myself and I don't mind even not great pictures of myself. Um, actually recently, I made a very conscious decision. I did the stylized portrait shoot. Um, I used myself as the subject. It was, uh, it's a whole different story, but it was to honor um, my grandmother who had passed away when I was 11. And so I had done a, a shoot of myself for that. And I, I didn't mind so much. Um, I'd had a bit of practice because a couple of weeks before I had decided to practice uh, with some new studio equipment or some new backdrops that I had bought. And I was taking a bunch of pictures on timer of myself. And uh, after about half an hour, I was like, all of a sudden I realized I'm uncomfortable. Why am I uncomfortable? It's just me. Like nobody else is here. I feel really weird. And I looked at the clock and I went, oh, it's half an hour. That's usually how long it takes for anybody to start to feel comfortable in front of the camera. So then I just started to ham it up and be a, a total dork. And that's where you got that photo of that you're using of me is because I was just like, okay. I was just going to start being a yes. dork. I was by myself. You used that. Uh, Debbie, she wants to see your self-portrait and she's uh, saying that. But uh, yeah, we've used it apparently on uh, our invitation, the announcement design. That's the portrait mm -hmm. you're talking about? Yeah, that's from that set. Yeah. See? I chose that. How, how it happens that I chose that picture from that set of... Uh, but um, what you're saying that, you know, I you go back to this interview and 
uh, at this specific time just look at your expression it's just me and the camera it's just what's happening it's just me and the camera yeah really and you know what and i'm saying it openly because this is an open life i have 43 mothers you have no idea that till now i've only re- i'm on a deadline but i've only received six or seven pictures and when i go back to the moms i'm like do you need any help with self portrait mm. they like no we're figuring it out what it is about us that we like and i'm like it's been almost a month and a half that i interviewed you i'm sure by now but it's that me and the camera really and then a little request comes you know i look nice here can you just take this picture or you know you photograph mm. me can you use that and i'm like no it is it is to dissolve it is not only to inspire but it is to dissolve first yourself this entire self portrait journey and then inspire dissolve this chatter come in this book and then inspire that's the journey of this book kit you know yeah and then you go like oh my god me and my camera there's nobody here and still there's this chatter like like yeah. exactly that word is what this camera and the self photo is about because there's nobody in the camera there's n- this this you and camera and you're sitting like now what do i do and really yeah. and then you take the first timer and you like delete 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 next delete 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 and you just keep deleting because you don't even want to keep them you know and then actually and this is a inspiration um uh you know this is an inspiration i'm saying this to everybody what just kate said it takes half an hour before you realize that i think now i'm comfortable i've let the chatter so in the first 5 mm-hmm. minutes all the mums who are working here if it doesn't happen keep going on that day keep going keep yeah. going keep going keep going and you will find the way to get that story out you know you will find it and that thanks for that tip because oh you're welcome that itself <laughs> is like a good tip for mothers to know that just don't stop at the first 10 minutes and like i don't think so today is the day to shoot it forget about it just keep oh, no. going there do the dance do the thing with the camera and it'll happen so that's beautiful uh, yeah. one of the moms who is so busy and i must acknowledge her here her name is um, dr rosetta williams she's a ceo of a school which is online and she is and you know she sent me 280 images of hers because she sat, and she was the first person who gave me a break when i was 18 years old as a so she's mm-hmm. also one of the moms here and some something she resonated with wanting to do self portrait and because there's so much self love and because she solved so many things in last uh 25 20 years of knowing her she's gone through a lot and today she's shining even more and more and more mm-hmm. that for her it was an exciting part to be in front of the camera and she's like i took one whole day off and oh. she asked me shikha how do you see me so i was like i see you a lot of books because she's an educationist and i see uh a lot of stuff and i see a lot of confidence and my god 280 images she had to send me through we transfer and i was just looking at it and i was like my god you're shining and she's like i did it for you but look at all <laughs> this, you know and she has gone from level 1 to level thing and she's like you know what i did shika i just told myself no matter what happens i will spend the whole day doing it till i don't get it and then she tried different things and different thing and it was over for her the book because i keep telling mothers that it's not about this one day of the book like it's the starting point and it will should happen forever for you the self portraits different journeys should be your journey documented over a period of time but let's yes. finish line you know this is the starting point so i love that tip and today's meeting that tip is going to go from your dedicated to kate that the tip has been given <laughs> by kate that do it at least for half an hour because i was looking for that one thing to tell mothers mm-hmm. that wh- why are they giving up why are they giving up and saying not today it didn't happen today it was not okay yeah i think that's okay i think it's okay because yeah some days but like days are just like that right so if it didn't work out that day try days. again tomorrow and Four. don't delete anything yes keep them all don't delete anything take photos of yourself give yourself if it has to be a practice or your own little personal project yes. and if it takes you however long it takes you to get the picture that you want that is okay just practice it it's about like, yeah yeah i just i just think it's a practice yeah i like the fact that you said don't delete them and that's tip number 2 going from kate in the meeting today is that why because i also realized kate today when i take a picture sometimes i don't like it and when i view it like after 20 days and i'm like 
that's a nice picture. I don't know why I haven't used it in my content till now. Yeah. Because we are yeah. so critical immediately that we will first criticize and say not good, not good, not good. And when we've got over it and we've just put it aside after a few days, sometimes that's a picture that rises. So it's a good tip as well, not to delete. Oh yeah, totally. And it's like, you know, you're documenting it as a part of your journey. So if like week, day one, you didn't like that picture, day two, you don't like that picture, day three, maybe you're starting to like them. And you know, your moods change, like our moods change. Um, I hate going shopping, like for clothes, like I hate going to the mall and I have to work myself up to it. And uh, some days I'll walk into the mall and I'm like, mm, I am not feeling it today, I'm going home. And then I will try again a couple of days later. That's a sweet story about shopping. That's the first one I've heard <laughs> that somebody has to, like I don't like buying clothes as well a lot, but. I don't have to work myself up like okay fine I'm going in but that's like yeah. a big effort for you to go and come back that's amazing oh yeah I mean I love it I have a, a friend or two who will um go shopping for me and they're like hey I was in the store and I found this do you like it and I'm like oh yeah I love it thank you that's the best <laughs> yeah, like, no, thank you for amazing. being my personal shopper how amazing how amazing so yeah. uh, let's let's move on quickly to being you being a mother now like I think because you're a philosopher just going on and on about it but I think thanks to that conversation and this book is based on pictures we have discussed certain points that I would definitely put this video on and tell people to watch this particular maybe cut this particular thing and send it to people cool. this is very important for all the mothers to understand what this project is where the soul is and two of us are sitting here trying to describe it in this conversation so probably i will cut this particular part of the tips to give and discuss and thanks for that oh um, you're welcome thank you you know and i must say this so when i started i was alone then debbie came in mm -hmm. then she joined as a pillar then more came nice. in then they joined as a pillar and said we take the burden of you of coordinating you keep doing this and then mm -hmm. I was struggling and then I stories started coming in and I sat down one day and I said, you know, uh, these stories need a similarity because it's one book. It needs some kind of a rhythm going in. So these stories mm -hmm. and words can be the same, but it needs something. And suddenly Samantha is there, uh, Elizabeth is there, one after the other and Sumitra is there. And they offer, I asked them that, will you help me? Because I flunked in my school for 10 years. So I am a no person for even fixing these stories. Not fixing is not the word, but just making them come to a rhythm, to a thing and the whole book coming together. And there was an editing team. And just two days back, I was sitting and I'm like, what do I tell these mothers so that they can come and give their pictures and what happens? And I find Kate right now giving tips. So like universe is sending me, and I, I, I'm not saying yeah. you're sitting here, but I'm saying that these tips were very important. Do it for half an hour, do not delete see your soul and it's okay. And the fact that there's mood, I knew all this, but because I'm so immersed that I could articulate it in this simple way to uplift. Oh, wonderful. And uh, you've voiced it out today. So this is also going to go in my guides as a cut, I'll try to cut it and put it in the guide for mothers to see that this is what we're talking about. This is what we need. And now the universe sends me a photographer to, who has a similar soul to this book to help uh, in any way. So I will reach out and ask for help because I also oh God. got a message that Shikha, you can't do this alone. It will be a big community bringing this book out because the pulse of this book is too strong. And now universe has sent me at the right time, maybe not before, just when I need it. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for that. And let's talk about you being a mom. Let's talk about you being a mom now of <laughs> eight year old. My little nugget. Yeah, my little eight year old, um, my little boy. I uh, call him my little nugget and he doesn't know he's, he doesn't like pet names. He doesn't, um, unless it's like chicken or something silly like that, but he doesn't um, always like compliments, um, can be quite funny about it and not want compliments. <laughs> and he prefers to come to me when he wants affection. If I try to kiss him whenever I want, he's like, mm -hmm. you know but every now and then he wants, but he wants snuggles at bedtime. Oh, yes, I'm saying this out loud and putting it on the internet. My kid loves snuggles. <laughs> Look at how much he loves, but how much you love doing it shows in your face, Kate. Uh, yeah. Then what he loves, I think, it totally shows um, that 
you're unable to express what it is for you but i totally see it in your face that what he means to you because more than mm-hmm. he loving the the snuggles it's the fact that i'm very happy that he loves snuggling with me it's like that proud mother, <laughs> uh, look on your face and i like that and i think the interview can go on and on uh, you know i also want to touch a little thing that you spoke about your mom being very hard on herself during pictures and that was an interesting conversation oh you know mm-hmm. let's do that because people feel i was told by one of my um, guy friends that you know shika why this pain you feel is there because i think women have become very vain due to all the cameras facing them towards so i said you are totally wrong i think it's been happening for generations and let's talk about that quickly uh, before we move on to manifesting your dream and talk about <laughs> but my mom not liking photos of herself you said she was very hard on herself and that's why yeah. you have to be hard on yourself what was let's tell people about that oh yeah okay okay uh yeah my mom is a beautiful i think she's a gorgeous woman other people have told me they that uh, they also think she's beautiful and she's one of those people that she doesn't see that in herself and will rarely let me take her picture but every now and then she'll tell me all right you can take my picture but only because i love you <laughs> and uh so you know she loves me and she lets me take her photo every now and then and yeah. she beams she beams for me but she uh is very hard on herself and yeah. uh i just thought well mom you're believing a lie for some reason you're telling yourself this lie and uh i think i just went the other way i was like oh no even if i even if i do look like a dork i don't care i'm just go ahead take my picture yeah and that's what you told me when i was talking having a conversation with you because i find a lot of mothers say yes i imitated my mom and i became like that because she hated pictures and then the whole concept of hating pictures and then i suddenly find you who says she hated taking her pictures being taken mm-hmm. but i went on the other side because i was like uh you know i would not well i just it. i saw the i just i think it was that i just i saw that and nothing i don't want any this isn't like against my mom like she's an amazing and wonderful person right but she no offense mom but yeah she believes this total fabrication about herself something that she has told herself that is totally made up she believes it and um i don't I know and this is no judgment <laughs> because this is no judgment to any mother here this project yeah. is no judgment to any mother to say why do you feel that this project is just to touch her softly and say you're gorgeous mm-hmm. and there is a beautiful part about you stop thinking this lie that you just said you know that it's a lie you just said it's a lie because it is and i as a photographer can prove it you as a photographer can prove it that there is a gorgeous part of you which you just refuse to see and then live with that for so long that it becomes yeah. a part of you you know and why is and i always I, was, i wonder too why it's so important to us why is it important to me that she sees the beauty that i see in her it, you know what i mean like why is that so important to me yeah. is it because is it painful to not see the beauty in yourself i don't know like yeah maybe because you see it maybe because i feel the same thing that i feel that like why am i like always putting in why such a big project has come out of all see yourself in a nice way see yourself in a light and i think uh, that also comes because maybe they've done a good job of raising us very beautifully and mm. we feel very uplifted and we feel very confident of being beautiful and uh, i've been told a lot of times why don't you dress up why don't you do as like because i wear my confidence and i walk i I still find yeah. that I love without really getting dressed with anything like I have I'm actually telling you after a shoot one of my uh, you know you wear this indian outfit and one of the pants below had go totally got torn and I was mm-hmm. hungry I actually walked into a five star hotel with my camera bag behind me and went into the buffet while it was all torn behind and my friends were saying you really here with this I said yeah I'm hungry I don't care about my torn pajamas right i yeah. think i'm going to take it but that happens i think maybe we were raised beautifully and that's why it matters that why is it matter like so much bothering you that you know you, you surround yourself with that then you miss yourself from your memories and then you miss yourself from all the dreams mm-hmm. and then you just 
like you just spoke about that you took this real estate person's picture and she's shining that if a picture can make you feel confident and you can start shining yeah. why are you surrounding yourself and maybe that's why it bothers both of us because maybe we've not surrounded ourselves because we wear it on uh, this love and i don't know with self love whether it's I, i don't want to give anything it's just the positivity that is buzzing inside to say yeah there there is like image it's just like a picture and it, it it's possible to look gorgeous and shine and being embraced without the typical thing that we're trying to do so i don't know maybe it's that we we'll well, yeah i don't know i think well i mean some people consider beauty a value as well and maybe some people um think of uh, if they think that they're being beautiful then maybe they think they're being vain and that yeah. that might be part of it yeah 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 because i mean we don't we don't value vanity <laughs> we go the other way from that so maybe yeah. that's part of it that could say we can philosophize yes no this is book this book is going to be a philosophy because yeah. now uh, you know we have 100 shades of mothers here kid 100 shades i am not mm. saying there are only 100 inspiring stories there might be no inspiring story but she's a shade of a mother who is a shade of a mother who exists you know so there going to mm-hmm. be all shades of mothers and i just think 100 is very less there might be 1000 shades of mothers but the beginning is these 100 shades of mother inspiring the world to say we are moms it's okay we are different kinds just like stop first judging ourselves and then tell the world stop judging them this is right this she's obsessed she's a workaholic she leaves her children she does this she doesn't dress up why is she in her pajamas all the time she's raising a child why does she can't dress up go take some time out to do some self love and i'm like just leave her alone she'll come out of it so i think a lot of mothers can't come out of that phase when she's raising children and right keep telling people that this project is dissolving even more judgment i never judged but even more if i had any kind because i'm realizing that a mother is also sometimes living her childhood in the motherhood she's in what she had as a child mm-hmm. you know there might be an abusive childhood there might be some trauma in the childhood and when being a mother she becomes a mother and she gets overwhelmed with that she starts living that she starts operating from that there might be a mother who is actually financially suffering and she doesn't know how to bring things there might be a mother who's suffering uh, an abusive marriage and so i think rather than just seeing her when she comes to a shopping center or a coffee shop and she's struggling rather than just thinking that oh my gosh she doesn't even know how to control it she doesn't know she's not in control mm-hmm. or she's over controlled or she's over possessive or she's over obsessive and i want to take out a book called obsessive mothers as well very soon um uh, that like let's leave her alone yeah and i agree this project is coming more and more that let's leave her alone what like i have uh, somebody who just like uh, so this is a statement it's an interesting one that uh, it's my sister in law and when she, she feels guilty of something uh, her, my, her older daughter had put hot water boiling water on the younger one without realizing during a bath time mm-hmm. and she didn't know what happened and by the time she knew what happened she realized that the 3 year old was totally you know burning because the she she had to scream and take it out from the older one what happened why is he screaming so much what happened in the bathroom and she says i threw water she touched the water it's like it was boiling so she rushed him with whatever thing didn't know what to do first aid and she rushed him to the hospital and she was just telling me two days back that she was she couldn't speak right she couldn't speak uh that what's wrong and the doctor had to just say that you know uh mm-hmm. hold on and doctor couldn't attend to the child because she just couldn't speak what just happened to her child right and the child was screaming away and earlier i was just like maybe few years back i was said yeah she should have been stronger she's a mother right but she just couldn't speak and then i heard comments family comments saying guess what the child was saying mama don't cry so they were trying to be very proud of the child who said mama don't cry and trying to have this judgment that why were you so weak in that moment but it was such a shock to her what happened that she could yeah speak. and rather than so today this project is bringing me even to that incident which was in my family saying that yeah she just couldn't speak just leave her alone you know she couldn't speak because she was in, suddenly she got shocked that my child is burning with this boiling yeah. and 
she felt alone she didn't felt you know she felt that she she didn't she was not in control so rather than just making these statements that like it's, it's making me cry because i am the family member who didn't even like probably would have heard it and said yeah she should have been stronger but i'm even dissolving that because i'm like that was her reaction to her child and let's stop judging her and then said yeah. her okay, if you could speak That's we don't know why she couldn't right yeah like... we don't know why she couldn't speak but she just she kept on you know taking that breath and she's like shikha you know i kept on screaming and she was telling me that i couldn't speak and then i sat there and i for the first time on the table i was a family table and i was literally in tears because i was feeling that yeah she couldn't speak why is this proud woman coming guess what her child was stronger than her she is the mother she should have been stronger than mm-hmm. her child she is the mother but she is a human who has a reaction could be rooted in her childhood something just bursted out of her yeah rather than saying yeah. you well you took him to the hospital you saved him you did it absolutely on time you were in control you drove there you put the child there but she couldn't speak and this movement is like bringing that judgment deleted like it's deleting that judgment for me because i'm like yeah she couldn't speak and it's okay yeah she we don't know speak. why we don't know why yeah and people have I'm different like, yeah oh sorry no no go ahead go ahead i was just going to say like sometimes i i had an experience recently where i real i i discovered that things happen in our childhood that when it happens in our childhood we can't articulate it and it never really gets dealt with and then we grow up and we react and do certain things and the way some of our reactions can be directly tied to a thing that happened when we were kids that we weren't aware like we we didn't stay in our conscious it went deep in our subconscious So maybe when she went to hospital something had happened at some point along the lines that it's just not it's so deep in the subconscious yeah. and we can't judge these things about other people it's not okay. we can't do that it's not okay to do that but that's what i'm bringing out in this book now yeah. it's not okay because i realized this uh you know i've been told that i'm an obsessed mother i've been told that she is always with her baby when my first one happened and i uh, my mother left and she was 6 years old like i mean sorry when i was 6 years old and she right. just, you just left because she was kids of feeling she was told you leave uh you're not worthy of these children and i and i again in this event yesterday i realized that my power was always to forgive at the age of 6 i forgave everybody because for everybody's sake it was a best decision i forgave everybody every time it happened i forgave everybody but when you become a mother and you know i was like my god i missed her for so many years i'm 32 years old and i missed her and i just forgave everybody to take her away and not even ask us that you should and i live that with my children you know and i i you can call me obsessed you can call whatever but i realized it later that i was living that with my child you know so mm-hmm. before we judge that and i realized it and i pulled myself out and i'm like shrika maybe you're getting obsessed because you're trying to be mother to two people you know you're trying to be mother to him and you're trying to be mother to yourself mm-hmm. so stop it and i solved it but this project is bringing more and more mothers ahead and i'm just like just stop stop it they are a very integral part of this this universe this mother earth the pulse that we are talking about let's stop it let's just stop saying to mothers that this is not okay that's not okay you're not right just stop it just stop it you know that's yeah this book let's just stop it let's uplift her because if she feels uplifted she will bring better children out then anybody can do it you keep putting the mother down with any comments or any judgments mm-hmm. forget about the children coming out and saving this planet in any way in a bigger way because they will come back rooted and wounded like and the mother will unknowingly pass that wound so when a mother yeah. happens just embrace her just just say fine i know this first five years are important for you let's support you and then you'll be out on the other side and it would be much easier but let's next five years let's support you let's figure it out and yeah. everything is okay yeah mothers tend to um they forget i think they we they we 
forget that. And you always want to put your child's needs first, but sometimes in order to put your child's needs first, you have to put some of your own first. Yes. You don't have to put but them all first, but some. They get into that zone. Somebody needs to mm-hmm. come and tell them that, you know? Yeah. And um, anyway, it just, when this project is getting very deep for me and that's why uh, yeah. I, I, things that are coming out, things that I feel, um, that's why I keep telling you, I don't know why this project is going and what it's going to bring, but I'm absolutely thrilled to um, have you as a mom here, Kate, and uh, mm-hmm. it's a pleasure to have a fellow photographer who thinks like uh, in a similar way to um, uplift people and I wish this good work is done. It's might be very insignificant for the world, mothers and their pulse, but I know it's very important to do to do anything in this world. If you want to change this world, mother's pulse has to change. This pulse has to start healing, you know. Mm-hmm. And let's go ahead and manifest your dream through this project. What's your dream, Kate? What do you what do you want? <laughs> you know, I totally should have been prepared for this. Um, my my dream is uh, I want to just keep taking photos of people. Uh, I want to show my son that when there's something that calls you to do, to uh, have that faith to take those steps to do it, universe has never let me down yet, you know, and I think that if you uh, can practice putting your faith in, in the universe and following your gut for what you feel is right to do. Who, you never know what can happen. Absolutely. So really, I think my dream is to just keep following my gut and let it take me on this journey and tr- try to not be um, too scared of it. You know, when things, I have this thing, you know, I'm, I do like to control a lot of things in my life and I'm learning how to um, let some of that control go and have more trust and faith that things are as it needs to be. And I, I, I just su- suddenly have a feeling you're the right place with these hundred moms, Kate, because uh, mm. this will come true. And I can see you as well uh, uplifting many, many mothers here uh, because I generally don't, um, I try to be very quiet and in control in my interviews because I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll let them all speak. But you did, I did feel the connection and we could speak openly about it. And I think mm. that you have a gift, uh, definitely of uh, you know bringing that out and uh, I hope um, many mothers connect with you here and meet this beautiful soul and uh, your dream comes true for sure I absolutely oh, thank you absolutely yeah. feel that. Uh, so we will wrap up the thing you know when my light goes off in front it's only on for 45 minutes so it tells me that it's more than 45 <laughs> minutes for sure and the light went <laughs> off for 10 minutes back from the front line it just so that's my signal that you're going on and on Shika stop it right? <laughs> oh I've loved this so much yeah, so same here same here totally and um and I I'm waiting for the other six, 57 moms to come in and I don't know who all are coming in and I feel this community should become you know one and if not for anybody even these hundred moms connect together uplift each other make their dream possible a big purpose of this book would have been done, you know. I think I would, have, I would have brought 20 years of my life into one purposeful thing and I would be very proud of it that I could do it. So, <laughs> yeah. I love that. And welcome to the book, uh, Kate, and I shall go off. Debbie, Trina, Samantha, and anybody else who will come in and join in um, later to, to listen to this interview, which was so interesting. Um, I mean, thank you for being there. Thank you for being there. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for being my pillars. Thank you for the editing team edition. And I think I will be pulling Kate in selection of the yeah. pictures very soon. It seems that she, she'll also become a team member bringing this book with me. We never know. Yeah. <laughs> Kate, Kate, I'm going to go off live and we have lots of hearts being given to this interview. So thank you so much. And thank you everybody. I'll see you in just a few hours. 
for the first time this girl who didn't know, had no idea about zoom is going to try and get 43 months and curate them <laughs> with an interview uh with Brittany, who's coming up on an embodiment workshop how to figure out to put yourself in the story she had some great things to say so she's going to be there and let's hear her for 15 minutes and see if we can bring ourselves out in the story in a particular way in this embodiment workshop i would be talking about some visual expectations that i have and clear some doubts we will have some breakout rooms today where mothers will be in breakout rooms and meet each other for the first time uh, as fellow mums in the book and then we will go on to q a and wrap it up so i'm really looking forward to this uh, meet in the evening please show up it would be awesome to see all of you together there it's like a coffee meet today so uh, thank you so much and i'm going off live thanks kate thank you so much thank you so much and I'm going